Kudercam is an animal-borne imaging device. It's basically a camera plus a bunch of sensors for collecting scientific data as well as point-of-view imagery. This was the first HD critter cam we actually made. We built that camera in like three months and had to try to put cameras on great white sharks. The process to put a camera on a shark is you have one guy throw out a tuna on a rope and he tries to lure the shark to go past the boat at a certain distance at, at a certain speed. Oh, it's another one. And then the, the other guy uses the, this thing called the shark pole. It's an apparatus for actually um, cinching a, the camera and fin clamp system onto the shark's dorsal fin. The challenge was we had to get the shark to actually go after the tuna because when they do charge after that bait, they, uh, they close their eyes for a brief instant. And that's the perfect time to put a camera on. That, that shark is actually bigger than both by far. I've got this line and a dead tuna head tied to it, but the tuna will fall off the line if you just like pull it over the side of the boat. So I was reaching over to get the tuna and the shark bit the outboard because it hadn't actually left. Turn around, guys. So I fell in and Eric fell where I was. He swam like Michael Phelps, like, like it only took a few seconds for him to get back and cross the distance, but it, it seemed like an, an eternity. I remember you told me at right, right when you, you got to the boat, you were like, oh, my, like, my torso is above the water, so now <laughs> I get to keep that. I get to keep this part. Critter Cam is a video tape recorder enclosed in underwater housing and it allows us to get film from the seal's point of view. It's almost like the seal is our cameraman for the day. Very first, first critter cam it was in the late 80s to early 90s. And it was, of, it was this type of critter cam, and so it was an eight millimeter tape. Greg Marshall started the remote imaging department back then at National Geographic, and he, uh, put the whole eight millimeter camcorder in this fiberglass waterproof housing that he had made. And then after that, the remote imaging department at National Geographic started up and we started to make the cameras smaller. The main thing about putting cameras with animals is just getting the equipment with them for a period of time until they get used to it. So they took, I think, about four or five days uh, with this, and after a while, the pride would just kind of occasionally tap on it. But what's nice about a vehicle like this is that they very quickly realize, I can't eat it, it's not gonna hurt me, it's really slow, it's basically a rock. So they kind of just give up. You could drive this right up to a sleeping lioness and get a photo of her and her cubs, and that's what Nick did with his assistants. In the past, it was typically you'd have your big long lens, you'd sit way over there, way away from the animals, and you get that photo, which can be a great photo, but you can tell you're far away. And here at National Geographic, we like to put the animals on a pedestal, if you will, making the animal feel big to you, the viewer, which makes them seem important to us humans, so maybe we'll care a little more about them. <laughs>